also in the last video recording we were um, taking uh, a closer look at the actual um, oxidation reduction reactions or steps involved in um, those photochemical redox reactions starting with P680 where it gets photo oxidized reduces pheophyton and we just kind of took some time to spell all of this out uh, there was one little error which I noted um, where the plastoquinone that is in the reduced form pass or the quinone molecule rather in its reduced form passes its um, electron over to PQ or plastoquinone it reduces P, uh, plastoquinone and when it does so it actually becomes oxidized which we did correctly state but we symbolized it incorrectly here so we'll just get rid of that little uh, minus sign and we'll just kind of redraw it so it was QA so the uh, reduced form of QA becomes oxidized. So that's our little correction from before. Um, plastoquinone is now in the form of plastoquinol, PQH2. We'll still kind of refer to it as plastoquinone, even though now it's a reduced form um, called plastoquinol. And it has the two electrons that took two photons, one each, to end up reducing plastoquinone. All right, so. We also took some time to um, look at how the oxidized form of P680, P680 plus, um, becomes reduced once again by extracting an electron from the oxygen evolving complex, and that it actually takes four, uh, four photooxidation steps um, or events, um, reducing P680 uh, to actually unload this whole manganese uh, ion complex from of. Uh, of electrons. So we're just writing out how many photons it took to empty the complex um, and then once it's empty it will the oxygen evolving complex will um, will spontaneously oxidize water molecules and reload its manganese ions again with the f um, electrons ready for the next photo oxidation step. So where we are now is uh, if we go back up here we can see that this plastoquinone has, as we drew above, extracted two hydrogen ions. It's now um, forming plastoquinol, which in this form, um, it has less of an affinity for that QB binding site right here. You can write the B down here. Um, which means that it dissociates and enters the interior of the thylakoid membrane, which is hydrophobic, which is where those um, that phospholipid bilayer, the lipid tails are all congregated. So now this plastoquinone or plastoquinol can diffuse basically through the middle of the, the membrane. It doesn't enter the lumen or the stroma but stays within the membrane and migrates towards the next protein complex. So we're going to move down to the next figure here to show that protein complex. So here's what we've already talked about, photosystem 2. Um, uh, the reaction center in the middle here where it's green, we can see the oxygen evolving complex down here where we talked about water splitting. Uh, we can see the light harvesting complex over here where uh, light energy was initially transferred to the P680 uh, chlorophyll molecules. Um, here's the QH2 or PQH2 plastoquinol or the reduced form of plastoquinone and it has dissociated now from the QB binding site after it picks up these two hydrogen ions and enters the thylakoid membrane. So that's what we're looking at here. We're following both the blue line which shows the electron flow as you can see up here. Uh, we're also showing the black line which shows the uh, movement of the electron carriers. carriers. So plastoquinone is a uh, right down here, plastoquinone uh, is a mobile electron carrier. Um, it is hydrophobic and it moves towards the cytochrome B6F complex by diffusion. So it diffuses laterally through the membrane, not across the membrane, through the thylakoid membrane. Toward 
um, the cytochrome B6F complex, which is this complex here and that's shown in purple. Once, okay, now, so once it, um, it reaches that complex, we're going to just put some details down here. The plastoquinol or reduced form of plastoquinone binds to the cytochrome complex. And oxidize or reduces rather an iron sulfur complex that we see right here. It's listed in your textbook as a Reisky iron sulfur complex, um, which is com a component of the whole cytochrome complex here. So when it reduces the iron sulfur complex, then PQH2 is going to become um, PQH2. Uh, is going to become PQ once again. It's going to become oxidized. All right. When it does this, let's follow the path here. It picks up those hydrogen ions from the stromal side. This is the stroma up here. Um, and as the PQH2 or, or plastoquinol diffuses through the membrane toward the cytochrome B6F complex, it diffuses towards the luminal side. So this is the lumen side of the membrane. And when it binds to the cytochrome complex and becomes oxidized, then it releases those two hydrogen ions that it picked up from the stroma. So this is a way of transferring or transporting hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane to collect inside the lumen. So we saw hydrogen ions collecting or um, being released inside the lumen from the hydrolysis of water or oxidation of water, and this is another source of hydrogen ions by transporting through, um, by, by being uh, picked up by the reduced form of plastoquinone uh, and releasing those hydrogen ions into the lumen, which is ultimately going to be important for over here what we see um, ATP synthesis. So we'll be leading to this here. So we, we just added this detail here that PQH2 diffuses towards the stromal, from the stromal side to the luminal side. Uh, when PQH2 it becomes oxidized to PQ, then it releases hydrogen ions into uh, the lumen. Alright, and then the next step that happens within uh, associated with the cytochrome B6F complex is then that the iron sulfur complex, which is now in the reduced form, is going to reduce, become the uh, reducing agent. So it's going to reduce plasto the next mobile electron carrier, which is plastocyanin. Um, right here. And we symbolize that as a PC many times. So plastocyanin is um, illustrated up here. Whoops. Is illustrated up here, plastocyanin. And we see the first one here picking up that electron, uh, shown again with the blue line. Um, so let's talk about plastocyanin a bit here. So plastocyanin is another, uh, is a soluble molecule. And it is a basically a peripheral um, protein, and so that means it can uh, diffuse um, across or along the luminal side of the thylakoid membrane. So it diffuses along the luminal surface of the thylakoid membrane. And where is it taking these, uh, this electron that it has just been reduced by? If we follow the black and blue lines, we can see that it's um, transporting that electron to the next photosystem, which is now photosystem 1. All right, now what's important to note is that uh, the iron sulfur complex can only transfer one electron, or basically plastocyanin, can only pick up one electron at a time. So it takes um, two, um, basically two plastocyanins to pick up electrons.
from the iron sulfur complex. One of the electrons we're going to uh, follow up here with um, that, that was transferred to the iron sulfur complex actually moves up into this other cycle here called the Q cycle. Uh, so this, the Q cycle is sort of an extra step that's taking place in the cytochrome B6F complex. And the Q cycle is going to be something that we come back to uh, in order to expand our discussion of ATP synthesis. So in the meantime, we're going to, um, whoops, here we go. We're going to continue following the electrons through this electron transport system or chain to photosystem one. So here we see photosystem one, and we're going to actually take this to the next diagram because we've got a little more room to work with here. So here is plastocyanin bringing one um, one electron at a time up towards photosystem one. Here's uh, photosystem one. And we're looking again at the reaction center, RC for abbreviating a re reaction center. And of course, like photosystem two, there is a light harvesting complex associated with that photosystem. There are um, uh, a series of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B accessory pigments, chlorophyll A pigments, as well as carotenoids and xanthophylls and so forth that are in that um, light harvesting complex, just like in, similar to in photosystem two, different uh, proportions of each, but essentially moving uh, energy through the light harvesting complex again by uh, radiationless transfer toward the special chlorophyll A molecules that are in the reaction center. In photosystem one, the special chlorophyll a molecules are ref referred to as P700, and there's a pair of those as well. They're labeled over here, by the way. So before we continue our discussion of um, this electron arriving front with, um, P with plastocyanin, uh, we want to reiterate what's happening already, what's been going on simultaneously with what was happening over here in photosystem 2. So radiationless transfer, transferred energy through the light harvesting complex all the way to the P700 chlorophyll A molecule. Then the P700 uh, molecule, which received energy from the light harvesting complex, becomes that excited P700. Uh, and now that uh, excited P700 uh, electron is going to be transferred to a series of molecules within the photosystem one reaction center ultimately to ferrodoxin. And we see ferrodoxin up, uh, actually ferrodoxin right up here. It is an iron sulfur complex, a uh, compound. Um, ferrodoxin is a soluble um, iron sulfur compa compound that is located in the stroma. So it's on the stromal side of the thylakoid membrane but can um, pick up those uh, electrons and then transfer them ultimately to reduce NADP plus, we're missing the plus there, NADP plus to form NADPH. So to make sure we understand the, the d we, how the electron flow is um, proceeding, we have a second electron coming from a, um, a second excited P700 chlorophyll A molecule transferring its electron ultimately to ferrodoxin. Now it's a reduced form of ferrodoxin having two electrons. All right, and then the ferrodoxin with its two electrons transfers those two in the presence of NADP plus. Um, and then that is going to lead to uh, the oxidized form of ferrodoxin plus NADPH, which now has the two electrons. Uh, one single NADPH molecule has two electrons um, it as it's become reduced. Now, as you recall, plastocyanin, uh, as a mobile electron carrier, has been uh, is carrying an electron, a single electron, over to uh, photosystem one. Um, so we have plastocyanin in its reduced form. And it's going to transfer that electron over to the oxidized form of uh, P700. And so that's going to um, oxidize plastocyanin, so it's ready to pick up another electron, and convert P700 plus back to P700. And one thing to keep in mind is that this, uh, this, the, this redox reaction has to take place twice for each NADPH reduced or produced. And ATP synthesis is next.